five ways you can hedge against inflation. Go ahead, Paul. So guys, behind me, I have a chart. No, Well-known ways to hedge against inflation is gold. The funny part is we don't exactly know why, but gold has always been looked at as the go-to, not currency, but the way of backing currency. But we got off the gold standard back in the 70s, thanks to Nixon. I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing, but you guys look right here. This light blue line, inflation. This dark blue line is gold prices, okay? So look right here. Inflation's up, gold's up. Inflation's down, gold's down. Inflation's up, gold's up. Inflation comes down, gold's down, and right back up again. So that's, it's just a very, there's a direct correlation there. Now, is it causation correlation? I don't know. But gold is oftentimes looked at as the hedge against inflation. With that said, lately, I have not seen gold prices going up as much as I would have thought. I agree. It, it, isn't that amazing? Like we have GDX and GDXJ, we which do. are gold miners and ETFs for that. But I look at gold prices and we're still around $1,900 now. So we have been for a year now, even though f f inflation really started to ramp up in the last six to nine months. So is this a lag? Does gold lag or is it? Well, great, great question, Seth. So look right here. Here, it didn't look like it lagged at all, no. right? But here it did. It looked like it lagged right here. But I remember, I don't know if it's a lagger or not, if it's a leader, who knows? But the point is, we have seen this in history and we look at this and saying, hey, gold might be a good way to hedge. Why is that? I just had this conversation yesterday with a friend and I was like, why is gold? He's like, I don't even know. Like, we mm. don't even know why gold is considered that. Are there are other uses to gold. That's why gold's kind of looked at as better than, for example, Bitcoin. But for those of you who think that Bitcoin is a hedge against inflation, please just go look at the chart of Bitcoin and, and just it's punch not. yourself repeatedly in the face. <laughs> so number two, I bonds. Guys, these have been around for over 20 years, but they've only gotten attention lately because, Seth, do you know what inflation was before this recent ramp up, like for the last 20 years? Yeah, I am not a specialist in inflation. Of course not, of course I'm but you're the with. average Joe. Yeah, you know, we, we, we laugh about the movie, um, The Big Short, where they say I bonds is something you get your snot-nosed kid and they hold it for 20 years and maybe you make $100 or something. In fact, my grandpa gave me bonds back in the day. Saving so, bonds. Yeah, how are these different? So I bonds are inflation adjusted. And the reason why they haven't been so popular in the last 20 years is because inflation has been nothing. Ah. It's been one and a half, two percent, maybe two. I mean, yes, in 2008, we had a big blip like we're having now temporarily. And then we hit a recession. Oil prices fell and it really dragged down inflation. Okay. Right now, if you want to buy an I-bond, you go very easily to treasurydirect.gov. The composite rate for I-bonds issued May 2022 to October 2022 is 9.62% annualized, which means if you're able to get this return over and over, if you put 10,000 in, which I think is the minimum, might not be, I don't remember, the maximum, sorry, the maximum is $10,000, you're going to get $962 a year. Over two years, that is $1,924 for holding something. Now, do your research, and we have a video that we made recently. Click up here for the video on I-bonds that we made in the past. It's the restrictions, things like that. It's much more thorough about I-bonds. So, so, Paul, yeah, in essence, the hedge is trying to protect our money and just be more informed. So why did we start? Th this, this goes back to our roots of this channel. Yeah, so I've always liked teaching because I realized very early on in life that when I didn't understand something, if I went and learned about it, it was much easier to accept the downs and the ups. I remember in early 2000s, the internet.com area. I didn't understand why these companies went to zero and I got suckered into a lot of things too. I remember buying stocks. A friend of mine's dad said, you gotta buy the stock and went to zero, global crossing. Yeah. I'm not blaming them, but I remember over time going, there's gotta be an explanation for this. I started to get into it a little bit. Then all of a sudden you go into the real estate and, and, and stock market crash 2007 and eight. And that's when I really had my epiphany going, okay, this isn't making sense to me. There's gotta be a better explanation. And I started to realize something very, very important. The more I learned, the less I feared. Mm -hmm. And this has kind of become like a tagline for this company internally is the more we learn, the less we fear. I feel think better about, that way, yeah. Yeah, think about everything in your life, Seth. You're a photographer. Do you fear photography? No, but I've become an expert, you know. I definitely feared it when I started. Exactly. If I went to, back to high school, Seth, Seth and I went to high school together. If I went back to Seth, uh, high school, Seth, and said, Seth, I want you to do, you're this weekend, you're in charge of doing this wedding photography. What would you do? Not, I'm running, fe yeah, not possible. My first weddings, I was fearful. We have a mutual friend who went to high school. His father's an open heart surgeon, right? He what? can do open heart surgeon surgery like that. He doesn't fear it. Why? Because he knows it. Yeah. Put you and I in front of somebody saying, hey, you need to do open heart surgery on me. We'd be like, 
Well, nice knowing you, pal. Good luck to you in the afterlife. Uh, say hello in our dreams or something like that. So, we wouldn't know. So since then, you've implemented this into tons of real estate, uh, almost a thousand units. So can people start moving into this to hedge so, inflation? Point number three, real estate is a phenomenal hedge against inflation. Hmm. Real estate and inflation are best buddies. Inflation helps drive real estate. Why is that? Well, let me explain why. It's very simple. Guys, when I have a piece of real estate selling for a million bucks, by the way, this is whether it's a home for 250 or an apartment building for a million dollars. You're buying this home based on your income. This apartment building is worth a max amount of dollars because of the income it generates for the owner. With inflation, what happens with income, Seth? Inflation incomes go up. Incomes go up. It might not happen immediately, but eventually over time, as we're seeing now, people saying, hey, my costs are a lot higher. I need more money in order to pay those costs. So what does that mean? I make more money. When you make more money, you're willing to pay more for homes and the cost of that home is a lot higher. We're seeing I want to go too. rebuild yeah. that home. We're seeing that too, yeah. Right? I mean, I remember, so I remember this is an, a story from, I built a house 15 years ago. The guy who, who owned the neighborhood that I built in, he was an old guy, bought his house in like 1947. He bought the house for $6 per square foot. And at that time, I was installing tile with tile material and everything in 2008 for $6 a square foot. He bought the entire house for $6 a square foot. The inflation causes all costs to go up and therefore real estate prices go up. Why? Because here your rents are going up if you own an apartment building and here your income goes up so you're going to pay more. Guys, look at, go find a home in your neighborhood. Go on Zillow. Go find a home somewhere around you that's been around for 60 years. Go on Zillow and see the previous transactions of what it was worth and what it sold for. And over time, you will likely see an increase even if you live in the areas that saw a 2008 crash for real estate prices. But real estate is a great hedge, whether it's investment or personal residence on inflation. The other thing is, guys, you're always paying your mortgage and it stays the same. If you get a 30-year fixed mortgage and it's $1,000 a month, if inflation's 100%, guess what your mortgage is? Yeah, it like stays that. the same. I like that. So you're, always, so you're gonna be paying your past mortgage on new dollars and new income. Dave Ramsey said in a recent video that now is still the best time to buy a home because he expects in the next five years the, the value will keep going. I couldn't understand it. You know I think Dave Ramsey's a moron, yes. but I think he might be right on this one. It all depends on inflation. If inflation, if you told me right now, inflation is going to be 10% a year for the next 20 years, I would literally shut down this channel, sell Seth, sell Tim, sell everyone I know and buy all the real estate I could for the rest of the time. Oh. Because I'm going to sit there and say, the, the, the big driver of real estate price is going to be income. And if income's going up 10% a year, my real estate values are going up at least 10% a year. Mm. So of course I would do it. I think he is pro he might be reacting more to what's going on recently with high inflation as opposed to is it going to be sustainable are we going to the unknown is are we going to have inflation for 5 6 7 10 years whatever it is i don't know i'm still a believer in let me buy the things i want to buy if it makes sense at the time so paul what are the final two hedges against inflation so these final two are things you can do for yourself first one options if you've been a, a fan of this channel we have taught a lot of people how to sell covered calls on their stock portfolio to generate other income. Point number five is just being good at savings. Live well below your means and save your money. That's a good way to hedge. That way when prices increase, you might just be able with options, you can make extra income to account for the price increases. With savings, you might have to temporarily decrease your savings rate to pay for the extra gas, extra groceries, et cetera. But those are the best things you can do for yourself. It sets a good pattern for you. Options are something that you can do for the rest of your life. It can generate a lot of money for you. And the great news is the earlier you learn it, when you're finally retired and have that nice big portfolio from paying attention to our channel, paying attention to our process and joining our community, you'll be able to use options to generate income above and beyond what you need. It's just about investing in yourself. Warren Buffett recently said that the best thing you can do is invest in yourself during inflationary times. And these are two ways to do that. But the best part is we have this community of 12,000 people who have joined our software. And the software, if you've watched any of our channels, does so much. It gives you everything you need to make great decisions on your investments. You've got the eight pillars 
You've got the retirement calculator. This tells you what you actually need in order to retire. Stock analyzer tool, which has been so popular because it's one thing to learn what to look for in a company. It's another thing to actually tell you. Seth, before you started, it was hard enough learning the numbers. And then Forget afterwards, you're like, it. you looked at me and go, okay, well, now what do I pay? Yeah, I mean, I, I defined companies as just their stock price. That, yeah. that, that was the true indicator of their success. But that stock analyzer tool is the most popular thing we have now. Oh, absolutely. Because it tells people, hey, the future is unknown. We have to make assumptions about the future. And those assumptions are going to drive, in the long run, the value of the company. But also huge is, like I said, this EM community. And I have two messages here from somebody. There are, and I check this thing all the time. There are thousands and thousands of people in here. We've had 12,000 people sign up for the software since we put it out. And they're in there providing support, teaching each other. It's amazing how many people will tag me in a question and I go there and five other people have already answered the question. I love that. Yeah, it's awesome. I don't need to teach everybody. It's, it's a community teaching together and learning together. And the best part is, this is so inexpensive. It's less than one cup of coffee per day. Imagine all the money we waste every day. I know I do it on coffee and stupid things. And this could literally change your financial future. It's a no brainer to me. And you get more of this exclusive content too. We put out videos every day only for our community. We do live streams. Mo and I went live yesterday twice, once each, just to the community. It's a phenomenal investment in yourself.